right now on 5 on your side at 10. Drier air is pushed into the bi-state region, but will it be enough to hold off the rain this weekend? Expired temp tags are a growing problem in and around St. Louis. As our I-team finds out, even some leaders in office are breaking the law. Allegations of bribes in exchange for tax breaks, all within St. Louis City government. Mr. President, you plan to resign your post? Uh, no. Why not? Uh, I'm not resigning. The federal charges three aldermen are facing tonight. Good evening, thanks for being with us. I'm Mike Bush, Ann Allred has the night off. Today, President Reed and Alderman Boyd resisted calls to step down. Three weeks ago, Alderman Collins Muhammad resigned because he was under federal investigation. Our political editor, Mark Maxwell, was in the courtroom today when all three men pleaded not guilty. Whispers and rumors swirled in City Hall for weeks after John Collins Muhammad resigned under federal investigation, but few people expected when federal prosecutors showed their cards in court, those charges would reach the second most powerful politician in the city. U.S. Attorney Hal Goldsmith brought seven criminal counts against three St. Louis Democrats in federal court Thursday afternoon. Both pay-to-play schemes set forth in the indictment relate to the defendant's acceptance of cash payments and other things of value in exchange for their official acts in providing commercial property tax abatements. FBI special agents focused on two plots of vacant land, both owned by Mohammed Almatan. The feds dropped drug and money laundering charges against him after he turned government informant a mole who wore a wire in private conversations. The undercover recordings of literally hundreds of meetings and telephone calls, court ordered search warrants and phone orders. The 66 page indictment names Almatan John Doe and claims he gave Collins Muhammad 10 grand in cash, a cell phone and a free car in exchange for property tax breaks worth up to 300 grand. And it claims he gave Boyd more than 9,500 in cash and free car repairs for a huge discount on a city-owned plot of land. Additionally, it claims he gave Lewis Reed more than $18,000 in cash and campaign contributions while he tried to steer city contracts to Almatan's business and shepherded the tax breaks through the Board of Aldermen. Mr. President, you plan to resign your post? Uh, no. Why not? Uh, I'm not resigning. Want to hurt the public trust to stay in this post while you're under federal indictment? No, an, an indictment isn't doesn't mean that you're guilty. The judge forbid Reed and Boyd from speaking to one another during the trial, but a lone exception carved out for while they conduct official government business on the record in public at City Hall. The seven count indictment now threatening to cast a long shadow of suspicion over city officials as they prepare to dole out hundreds of millions of dollars in federal COVID funds. Back to you. The Board of Aldermen is scheduled to meet at City Hall tomorrow morning. Alderman Joe Volmer will preside over those meetings until further notice. We continue our team coverage of this story tonight with our Robert Townsend. He spoke to a longtime supporter of Alderman Jeffrey Boyd. Plus, he has reaction from fellow aldermen. Robert's live outside City Hall. Robert. Mike, from shock to disappointment, today I heard it all when I talked to people about the allegations Boyd, Collins, Muhammad, and the Board of Aldermen president are now facing. My reaction would first be, wow, okay, because he's done a lot of good things in the neighborhood. Northside resident Belinda Alexander is talking about her 22nd Ward Alderman Jeffrey Boyd. She's stunned after hearing Boyd, St. Louis Board of Aldermen President Louis Reed, and former 21st Ward Alderman John Collins Mohammed have now been indicted on federal theft and bribery charges. But I'm having a hard time believing that he's a good guy in my book. Horrible shock, big shock, earthquake size shock. The explosive bombshell sent shockwaves across the community and among the Board of Aldermen. I was uh, busy doing my work for my constituents and all of a sudden my, all of my technology started uh, blowing up. Collins Muhammad suddenly resigned last month. A big question now, should Reed and Boyd step down? I think they need to look at where they're at and make that decision on their own. And despite the allegations, there's still support for the embattled alderman. I take all of this as allegations at this point until my colleagues have their day in court. I'm gonna stick by him to the end. 
We rode around for several hours thinking lots of people would have a lot to say about this. Surprisingly, though, a majority of folks told me they were either unfazed or did not have any comment. Live downtown, outside City Hall, Robert Townsend, Five on Your Side. Now, we asked our Five on Your Side political analyst, Anita Mannion, about these charges and what it could mean for the future of city government. We would still like to see and would expect to see maybe some um, reforms on the Board of Aldermen because the aldermen do have such power over these tax abatements, which can add up to tens and even hundreds of millions of dollars. It's sort of a rubber stamp that does open the doors for possibilities of corruption. Alderman Board is looking at the most prison time up to 55 years for all four counts. President Reed could be looking at 15 years and Collins Muhammad could get 35 years. They could also end up paying fines, but it's unlikely that they would get those maximum sentences if convicted. This is a story we will continue to follow and update as we learn more. We'll have more reaction from residents and St. Louis City leaders on KSDK.com. And you can also get breaking news alerts and updates just by downloading the free Five on Your Side app. Some breaking news right now. Officers are at the scene of a standoff in East St. Louis. This is a live shot from the scene right now. Police say shots were fired around 730 tonight. The suspect then ran into a home on Pickett Avenue. The St. Clair County Sheriff's Office and Illinois State Police are helping local police to try and get him out of the home safely. We do know two other people are inside, but we don't know who they are and if they're in danger. We're in contact with police. We'll let you know as soon as we learn more. There are too many other schools, too many other everyday places that have become killing fields, battlefields here in America. President Biden tonight calling on Congress to enact stronger gun laws following several mass shootings. He's pushing to renew the ban on assault weapons and high capacity magazines. And he also wants stronger background checks and red flag laws. He says this is not about punishing responsible gun owners. This is not about taking away anyone's guns. It's about vil not about vilifying gun, o gun owners. In fact, we believe we should be treating responsible gun owners as an example of how every gun owner should behave. The president also talked about repealing immunity for gun manufacturers and addressing the mental health crisis. The U.S. House is expected to talk about a bill that would ban assault weapons as early as next week. Tonight, we're learning more about the motive in the latest mass shooting. A man walked into a hospital in Tulsa, Oklahoma yesterday. He killed four people, then himself. Police say he was targeting a surgeon who performed back surgery on him weeks ago. Authorities say he was armed with two weapons. One was an AR-15 that he bought just hours before the shooting. This shooting and others have many pushing for more gun laws. Last week, a gunman killed 19 children and two teachers at a school in Uvalde, Texas. And last month, 10 people were killed at a grocery store in Buffalo, New York. Tonight, one man is dead. Two others are recovering after being shot during what appears to be a burglary. This all happened at a home in New Athens, Illinois. Five on your side's Travis Cummings went to the area where the major case squad has been stationed all day, and he joins us now in studio with the latest. Travis? Hey, Mike, this all unfolded just before 1130 this morning on Golden Rule Mine Road in New Athens at a rural home. You have to take a long dirt road to get there. Neighbors say this type of thing just doesn't happen in their area. Investigators say they are doing all they can to find who's responsible. This is an unusual event. Uh, shocking, in fact, that someone was actually shot and killed uh, for this type of an incident. Multiple units and the St. Louis Major K Squad lined up outside of a house on Golden Rule Mine Road for hours in rural New Athens, Illinois, where deputies found three men, 50, 47, and 25 years old, shot outside Thursday morning. One of the men died. Another was airlifted to a hospital in St. Louis with critical injuries. The other by ambulance with non-life-threatening injuries. One of the three men lived here. It appears that the victims interrupted a burglary uh, where the suspects came out and confronted them and then the shots were fired. Officials say the suspect got away in a blue or gray Chevy Lumina with a yellow light on top. Captain Bruce Fleshron with the St. Clair County Sheriff's Department leading the investigation says in his decades of experience, he's never seen a burglary go this way. Normally burglars run away. Uh, 
and they're not in daytime. I mean, that's, clearly this is a rural remote area, so they felt safe, I guess, during the day. Uh, a confrontation directly between homeowners and, and uh, criminals are pretty rare. Neighbors passing by didn't want to go on camera, but told Five on Your Side, the man who owns the house is a nice guy and hopes who did this comes to light. Uh, this is unfortunate. The subject was armed and apparently obviously opened fire uh, for whatever reason. We hope to get to the bottom of what this, what this is about. All right, and once again, we want to give you a description of that getaway vehicle. That's a blue or gray Chevy Lumina with a yellow light on the top of it. If you've seen that or have any other information that could help out in this case, call the Freeburg Police Department. That number is 618-539-3132. Callers were moving into town for NASCAR tonight, and there are big events happening all weekend. Tomorrow is Richard Petty Day. He'll take part in a Q&A with fans. Saturday, the Camping World Truck Series, and on Sunday, it's the Enjoy Illinois 300. Five on your side, Sports Director Frank Cusimano will have much more on the big race coming up in about 15 minutes. Driving around with expired tags. It's just frustrating because you know, somebody in power should be held to a higher level, higher standard. They should be at a higher bar. Our I-team exposes not one, but two public leaders who are part of the problem. Accusations against Amazon. Why lawmakers claim the company is obstructing an investigation into the Edwardsville tornado. Plus, what Amazon has to say about it. Open those windows. Let the cooler air in tonight. How long will this last? And will we get through the weekend without any rain? A former Hazelwood teacher's aide who sexually assaulted a student will likely spend the rest of his life behind bars. Deontay Taylor is convicted of assaulting the seven-year-old child and exposing him to HIV. The victim was a student at Lusher Elementary where Taylor worked in 2015. Taylor also pleaded guilty to hiring a hitman to kill the child and two members of the family to cover up his crimes. Today, he was sentenced to 50 years in prison. A now former Lindbergh High School teacher and coach is accused of sodomy. And tonight, police believe there could be more victims. Grant Gomer is accused of having sexual contact with a student under the age of 17. He was a teacher at the school for eight years, coach and teacher liaison. The school tells us he is no longer employed there. Anyone who believes they know a victim or they are one are asked to call St. Louis County Police. Well, viewers contacted our I-team after noticing a St. Louis alderman and a county administrator not playing by the rules. Ninth Ward Alderman Dan Gunther and St. Louis County Executive Sam Page's Chief of Staff, Cal Harris, both drive cars with expired license plates. Tonight, the I-team's Christine Byers tells us what they had to say for themselves and what police are doing about it. If somebody isn't following the law with something so simple as tags, why are they going to be filing a law with anyone else? Andrew Polacek is talking about 9th Ward Alderman Dan Gunther. The alderman drives this old pickup, and as you can see, the tag expired in 2019. You can't expect a normal citizen to particularly do the right thing if you can't see your leaders to do the right thing. Drive down any street in the St. Louis area or any parking lot, and chances are you'll find some expired tags and expired temporary tags just like the Aldermans. In fact, we visited a half dozen random parking lots in St. Louis and St. Louis County and found expired tags at every one. I don't like paying taxes, but I do it because if I don't, I get pulled over and I get a ticket. The I team looked at the number of tickets issued in four counties and found enforcement is way down. St. Charles County Police wrote almost 1,100 tickets for improper plates and tags in 2019. It dropped to less than 900 in 2021. In St. Louis County, officers wrote just over 10,000 tickets in 2019 and almost 6,000 in 2021. In Jefferson County, it dropped from 3,600 tickets in 2019 to just under 2,000 last year. 
Captain Nick Forler said there were simply fewer cars on the road during the height of the pandemic. As we look at this year, it seems like we're on pace to kind of pick back up. So it seems to be a little bit more consistent with the way it was pre-COVID, uh, which is probably a reason that uh, some of those numbers have decreased through the years 2021 and, and so on. That's what we found in St. Louis City, where Alderman Gunther lives. About 6,200 tickets were handed out in 2019. It dipped drastically in 2020 and then edged back up to over 4,400 last year. Public Safety Director Dan Isom wouldn't comment about Alderman Gunther's plates. We get a lot of people calling us and telling us they see these temp tags and these expired tags all over town all the time, and it just doesn't seem like police are doing anything about it. Why is that? It's not the primary reason that we're pulling over people in cars, um, because we have a limited amount of resources and time. If we were to completely enforce that, um, we wouldn't have time to do the other things that are very important as well. So um, we've instructed officers to enforce it as a secondary violation. Alderman Gunther isn't the only public official driving a car with an improper license plate. A viewer sent us a tip about a car that belongs to St. Louis County Executive Sam Page's chief of staff. Calvin Harris's out-of-state plates expired in 2021. Page's spokesman told the I-Team Harris is in the process of getting it licensed in Missouri. The I-Team spotted Alderman Gunther's pickup just this week parked in front of his home with a flat. We tried talking to him, but he didn't answer. He told us during a phone call the truck is old, and without parts, he's unable to get it inspected and tagged. Gunther admitted he uses the truck and knows he's breaking the law. It's just frustrating because you know, somebody in power should be held to a higher level, higher standard. They should be at a higher bar because um, you're a role model. You know, and whether you're a teacher, a priest, a, a politician, a, you know, a CEO, if you can't be at the higher bar, why should anyone else? For the I-Team, Christine Byers, five on your side. And the I-Team checked with Alderman Gunther again today. He declined to be interviewed. Also today, Sam Page's spokesman said he couldn't check with the chief of staff about whether or not he got his plates in order because he is on the Lufthansa trip to Germany. To learn about what's being done to eliminate temporary tags, read Christine's story on KSDK.com. Well, tonight, lawmakers accused Amazon of blocking an investigation into a deadly tornado in Edwardsville. Six Amazon workers died in the tornado back in December when the warehouse collapsed on them. Amazon was supposed to hand over important materials by mid-April, but lawmakers say that never happened. Three Democratic lawmakers sent a letter to the company's CEO demanding to know why. That includes Missouri Congresswoman Cori Bush. She sent us a statement that says, in part, Amazon must answer for its negligence. We reached out to Amazon, who says they have turned over more than 1,500 pages of information. We asked Representative Bush about this, but have yet to hear back. All right, let's check in with Chief Meteorologist Scott Cottle now. We're expecting a mostly quiet weather weekend, which is good news for the race. Yeah, because, you know, this is not a quiet re weekend for many of us. We've got lots of things going on this weekend. You've got graduation parties, actual high school graduations. There's the race going on over at Worldwide Technology. Maybe you're heading out to a, a lake location. We're going to get you covered here right now. Looking in St. Charles, we're at 66 degrees. Pretty quiet conditions right now across the area. We're really cooling out though. Once you get away from the core of the urban area, already down to 62 in Edwardsville, that's a little farther out and you get into some of the low spots and we're already down into the upper 50s tonight. The clouds have continued to move out of our area during the evening hours. Still have a few hyping clouds south and east of St. Louis. All the rain has headed farther to the south and we're dry that cooler nice, pleasant, dry air filtering in right now. Do you have a little tropical system here that is developing? It's expected to become a tropical storm. It's called a potential tropical cyclone. Now the Hurricane Center does that because they needed to put up tropical storm warnings across much of southern Florida. It's not going to become a hurricane. It's a big rainmaker for the folks in southern Florida. Already 59 in Warrington, Chesterfield and Sullivan. Look at DeSoto at 58 degrees right now. In town, we're still in the 60s, and our dew point temperatures have dropped back into the 40s. Incredibly dry air, 78 for the high temperature this afternoon in St. Louis. Tonight and tomorrow morning when you wake up, a lot cooler. 
Temperatures in many of the outlying areas close to that 50 degree mark. We should be in the mid to upper 50s in town. A lot of sunshine on the way. If you work outside tomorrow, grab the sunscreen. You're looking at temperatures headed back into the upper 70s, low 80s, but with low humidity, abundant sunshine. Perfect for Richard Petty Day over at Gateway Worldwide Technology Raceway. And look at this forecast Toyota Truck Series 200 there. Saturday dry clouds start to increase Sunday. We may have a couple of showers in the morning and then later in the day temperatures will be in the 80s. So you look across the region here Saturday. What we're concerned about is as the warmer air tries to work back in, we may see some showers trying to push towards Lake of the Ozarks and down towards Table Rock. So we'll watch that for Saturday into Sunday, but generally at the area lakes this weekend, pretty good weather expected. Just may have to dodge a shower or two at some point. Better chances for rain come Monday, Tuesday and into Wednesday and maybe potentially in there some stronger storms at some point. Trying to pinpoint that this far out hard to do. Most of the weekends dry and bonus here, Mike, for the first weekend of June. It's comfortable. That sounds good to me. All right, Scott, thanks. Frank is here with sports. Well, Mike, wait to hear the money number of this NASCAR Cup Series and what it will mean to our region. It's staggering. And the Cardinals played the Cubs, and that was no fun. See you in a few. Folks, the big difference between the Cardinals and the Cubs is the Cubs rebuild and the Cardinals reload. Their records heading into the game tonight tell the story. The Cubs are eight games below 500, and the Cardinals are eight games above 500. Let's take a look at game one of this five game series. And we begin with a positive note. Third inning, Paul Goldschmidt finds the gap. It scores Harrison Bader, and it extends the hit streak to 24 games and the on base streak to 38 games for Goldie. Cubs led seven to three into the ninth inning. Harrison Bader will hit a two run homer. That was as close as the Cardinals would get. Cubs win 7-5. Hey, let's go to Yankee Stadium. Remember Matt Carpenter? Sure you do. Today he took Shohei Otani deep, right deep in the first. The He's only hitting 188, but he does have three homers in 16 at-bats. Way to go, Matt. So Worldwide Technology Raceway commissioned a seven-person study from Maryville University to gauge the economic impact of the Enjoy Illinois 300. They determined it will be $60 million for our region. And I got to tell you, in the span of two minutes tonight at Fan Fest at Ballpark Village, I met somebody from Green Bay, Texas, and Canada. NASCAR attracts a large audience and some incredible talent, like this man, Kyle Larson, who is signing autographs today. This 29 year old, five foot six, 135 pounder, already has 17 career wins. Uh, well, I mean, I've been in the Cup Series for like eight years, so it's really, to me, not that much. So, um, yeah, I, I don't know. La last year was really good. We won you know, 10 races. We knocked a bunch out then. But, um, yeah, I mean, I, I don't know. It's Hey, it, I'm a Cup Series champion, and, and that's all that really matters to me. It was a busy day at the raceway. Haulers arrived with cars and equipment, and fans arrived at the track campground from across the country. One fan says it makes him proud to see a sellout crowd in St. Louis this weekend. You know, they've been preparing for this forever, and so it's just another great event for the area, and it's getting supported. That's, that's the best part. My understanding, this is the first of three years for the contract, so, you know, hopefully, uh, hopefully it continues on for a long time. It's going to be here forever. Hey, Jason Tatum and the Celtics are playing game one of the finals in Golden State. Right now, it's 117 to 105 Boston with about a minute to play. Tatum's had a quiet night with 12 points. Spring football is over for Mizzou. SEC media day is over, and now it's time to get ready. The coaching manual has been rewritten with NIL and the transfer portal. Coach Drink is finally figuring out his roster. I think I feel the most settled about my football roster for the 2022 season than I have all year today because I know that the guys that are in this locker room are committed to be in this locker room and I don't have to fear of them transferring out as of right now. News fans are going to hate this. Nazem Kadri has three assists tonight, including this one to Arturi Lekanen. Colorado rolls four to nothing. They lead the Western Conference two 
to zero. I think they're going to win the Stanley Cup, too, and I hate that. <laughs> All right, Frank, thanks. Right. Some big changes could be coming to Brentwood Boulevard, how a developer wants to breathe new life into the area. Five on Your Side is a proud partner of the Folds of Honor campaign, sponsored by Schnooks. From now until July 4th, you can round up at the register. The money raised provides scholarships for spouses and children of fallen and wounded service members. There's a $200 million plan to redevelop a strip mall across from the St. Louis Galleria. According to our business partners at the St. Louis Business Journal, it's been called the Boulevard 2, and it includes apartments, retail offices, and a hotel. Midas Enterprises, a company based in Maryland Heights, closed on the deal in March. Kids under the age of five could get a COVID vaccine shot by the end of this month. The White House expects vaccinations to start as early as Tuesday, June 21st. Of course, that depends on FDA and CDC approval. The FDA is meeting about the vaccine for young kids in two weeks. More baby, baby formula is on its way to the U.S. The FDA says Nestle is sending another shipment from Germany. It should hit store shelves over the next two months. Other flights with formula on board are coming into the U.S. in the coming weeks. And there you have it. Five on your side at 10. The Tonight Show starring Jimmy Fallon is next. And Jimmy's guests tonight are Fred Armisen and Chloe Seveny. Start your day with Today in St. Louis beginning at 4.30 a.m. Have a great night. We'll see you tomorrow.